Hidden inside this library are the two most powerful nodes in N8N. What are those nodes? Let's answer that by building a workflow that showcases something we all need to know from time to time. What's the weather today? Hey there, it is I versus AI, and this is N8N. Let's take the first step in building out this workflow by adding a scheduled trigger node because I'd like the weather to be sent to me every morning at 9 a.m. in my Gmail account. Let's trigger this at the hour of 9 a.m., head back to the canvas, and save. Now let's remember the analogy of how to think about nodes and data flowing through the nodes, where the scheduled trigger node is the beginning of our train journey, the train consisting of two cars, the engine and the baggage car. And in the baggage car is the data that's picked up throughout the train's journey through the workflows. We need to add another station, a node, or a step. Let's add the HTTP request node. This is the first of the two most powerful nodes in N8N. Its power lies in its ability to allow you to connect to any app or service that has an API, whether N8N has an integration or not. And there are many APIs out there. There's no possible way that the N8N team could integrate every single one of those APIs. The flexibility of the HTTP request node allows you to do just that. Connect to any API out there by importing what's called a curl request. You do not have to write this request. You don't have to fill in all of these forms. What we need to do is to give the documentation of whatever API we are trying to connect to, whatever apartment we're trying to reach, to ChatGPT or another large language model. Because the type of API request that we are making is called a REST API. That stands for Representational State Transfer. It basically means how are we going to make a request? Which request are we going to make? We can make a GET request. We go to the apartment and we ask for information. We can create a POST request where we send information and add it to the database, to that apartment. We can do things like delete information, update information, and various other methods. The Weather Forecast API at open.medio.com has all of this information that you can get about weather for a specific latitude, longitude, time zone. A forecast for seven days, for example. Daily weather variables, the one we're looking for, current weather, whether you have Celsius or Fahrenheit. There are two ways that we can give the information to ChatGPT that we want. We can simply take the information here, check it off. Let's say we want rain. We'd like sunrise, sunset. And as far as latitude and longitude, Let's leave those blank because you don't have to spend a lot of time going to look those up. You don't even have to set the time zone right now. And we will take the temperature and turn that off because we want the current weather, what's happening right now at 9 a.m. But as you can see, you can get quite detailed with this weather API. The API URL is a really good example of showing you the analogy of the apartment blocks and the apartments in play. The apartment block is the main URL address here. The apartment we're going to is forecast. Now, the specific information we're looking for, we could go and say, well, give us everything you've got, but that's a lot of information that we don't need. That's where query parameters come in. Query is for question mark. Everything after the question mark basically asks the question, hey, this is what we need. Do you got it? And we need the latitude, longitude, the daily sunset, sunrise, the current temperature, relative humility, rain, and let's get that in Fahrenheit. All of this information we can simply give to ChatGPT. ChatGPT searches, makes the curl request. Let's take it and copy it into our HTTP request node. Now the settings, the conductor's clipboard is completely filled in for the conductor taking his little carrier pigeon, going
going out into the world, getting the information and bringing it back into our workflow. It's all set up without you having to sit there and specify those query parameters one by one, which would be very tedious. Let's test this step and see if it works. Yay! There's all the information that we asked for. I told you that there were two ways that we could get information in order to make the curl request. And that is one, what I've shown you, adding the link with the query parameters. But the second way is to simply add the documentation for whatever API that you're working with. This is the documentation for N8N's API. Documentation for API will often look exactly like this. This is very neatly organized so that you can see all of the different endpoints, the different apartments that you can get information from and the types of requests that you can make at that endpoint. The next node along the route, the next station for the train is the edit fields node. This node is a standard, a very utilitarian node that you'll use in your workflows. It allows you to set particular information in a variety of different formats. Technically, this node is not needed in this workflow, but I wanted to showcase it because you'll be using it so often to define fields that you wanna use later on in the workflow. Basically, the conductor comes out and says, righty ho, I see that you want temperature to always be defined by this JSON expression, humidity to be defined by this expression, and so on. So that we can use that information in the next most powerful node in N8N. This is the code node. It is a core node in N8N. And like HTTP request nodes, what makes this node so powerful is its versatility. If there's something in N8N, for example, some other node that does not exist in N8N, something you want to do specifically in your workflow, much of the time using JavaScript or Python, a large language model can write code for you that does exactly the unique and interesting thing that you want to do. In the YouTube notes automation that I've shown you before, I needed a node that could do something very specific, something that N8N definitely doesn't have a native node for. I needed it to clean up a transcript in a very specific way. I wanted a model to be able to turn a transcript into a summary, but the transcript that came back from the API request was full of a lot of extraneous information, like timestamps that were way too many position information, and a lot of text, meaning that if I sent this to the large language model, it would fill up the context window of that model, and I wouldn't be able to put in very long videos. I needed to get rid of all of the timestamps, still keep some of them so that there could be timestamps in the summary, and I also needed a way to shorten the text, to zip it up a bit so that more text could fit into the prompt being sent to the model. To do that, ChatGPT wrote code that removed many of the timestamps and also removed every third vowel. Because large language models are very good at understanding unstructured text, it is perfectly capable of understanding text that is missing vowels. This gave more text to the model and I could get transcripts for longer videos. This code node is doing something very simple. It's getting a weather description. It's converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, just in case I had forgotten to add that Fahrenheit query parameter that I showed you earlier. It's getting data directly from the previous input, the set weather node. It's adding in a date. It's creating some markdown content and it's returning that content with a simplified file name. That file name can be used along with this simple information to convert to a file or be sent in my Gmail as a message by dropping the content right here in the message box, choosing message, 
send and the email address I want to send the message to. A note on credentials. Setting up credentials is fairly easy. Like with anything else, you log into your account, your Google account, and that connects you. If you are self-hosting the way I am, there's a few more steps to it. In the description, I'm going to link to a video that will show you how to set up your Google account because there's a few steps to it. But once you get them set up properly, then it works from then on. That's one of the side notes about self-hosting. You need to take a few more steps, but self-hosting is absolutely worth it. I am self-hosting on DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is absolutely fantastic. And not only that, there's detailed information on self-hosting through DigitalOcean. That is something that's beyond the scope of this guide. But just know that self-hosting is something that there are a lot of YouTube videos on already. And I will link one that I recommend from Ben, who has a great channel on setting up N8N and self-hosting. Now let's save and test our workflow to make sure it works correctly. There's the train moving through the station and here is our weather report. One thing I've noticed that might need some correction is it's pretty hot <laughs> according to this in Seattle. I think we might need to look at that. <laughs> Workflows like this one are very simple. We know exactly what each node does, but as you move into more complicated solutions, making sure that your nodes are named correctly and have notes in the note field is very important. It's very helpful for both yourself building and coming back to the workflow perhaps after some time, but for anyone that you happen to share the workflow with. My favorite thing to do is to use the secret of N8N that we've talked about before by selecting all of the nodes with control A, copying them, putting in the JSON, and then saying, please make sure all the nodes in this workflow are clearly and concisely named and that the notes are filled out with what each node does, what data flows into the node, what data flows from the node, and which node it flows to. Output the entire updated JSON in a code block for easy copying. A large language model can output an entire workflow. I'm gonna copy the JSON that the model has produced. I'm gonna select the nodes that are currently in the workflow, delete them. I'm gonna place my cursor just here as the nodes will always show up just to the right of my cursor. Paste them in and we see that they have all been named. Let's take a look at the daily trigger there's the note. All of the nodes have been named and the Gmail trigger has a note as well. This is the simplest and easiest way to make your workflows neat and functional. A few more tips for working with workflows that will help you become a seasoned flow grammar. A workflow has the ability to pin down data. In this case, with the Fetch Weather API, it's free. But supposing the API was not free, and cost credits every time you made a call. As you were building out the workflow and testing it, you did not want to make a call to this API every time you needed to test the workflow. For that, you can hit the menu, hit pin. You can do the same thing from inside the actual node, or you can just hit P on your keyboard to pin or unpin the node. I'm going to unpin the node and show you that the node now has what's called stale data or old data. It basically means that the data inside the node could use a refresh. Simply testing the node again or running the entire workflow will refresh the node. On the inside, I've heard that this is called in N8N dirty data or a dirty node. <laughs> so they have their own internal term for this yellow sign here, which tells you simply you need to update this data inside this node to use it in the rest of the workflow. Sometimes working with a node means that you might want to deactivate it. It's doing something that you would want later on when the workflow is running, but while you're testing, you don't specifically need that. Activating the node or deactivating it can also be done using the power sign here or the D for deactivate 
on your keyboard. The two most powerful nodes, the HTTP request node goes out in the world and brings information back to your workflow. And the code node can do, well, whatever it is you need done. But the AI agent node can use any workflow, any workflow or tool available to it to do what you need to do. Like, oh, say, get the weather for you every morning, check your calendar events for the day, and send information to you at a specified time. If you have wanted to have access to an assistant that can help you manage your life, the AI Agent Node is the way to do that. And N8N's implementation of the AI Agent Node, it is the best I have seen. It is excellent. Let's take a look at our first AI Agent building out a beginner AI Agent Assistant that handles our calendar and that wonderful weather report automation. And let's do that in this video, which is on screen right now. 